in every nation, in every region, now has the decision to make. Either you are with us, I mean real Muslims who are following Salaf footsteps, or you are with the Obama, Professor Holland, George Bush, Bush, Clinton, Ban Ki-moon, and his people generally. And any unbeliever is, 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 okay. This war is against Christian. I mean Christian generally. Abu Mohammed, Abu Bakr Al Shekawi, or Abu Bakr Shekau, whichever one that you know him with, those are his names. One man that almost brought Nigeria to her knees. Yes, you may not have heard about him, but I'm very sure you know about the 2011 United Nations office bombing that left 21 people dead and 73 people heavily injured. The January 20, 2012 attacks, where more than 183 people lost their lives in a single day in Nigeria's northeastern state of Kano. And then the April 14, 2014 Chibok girls kidnap, where 276 school girls were kidnapped from their dormitory in Chibok, a town in Medugri in Nigeria. Okay, maybe you don't know about all this. I'm very sure you remember this picture of Michelle Obama with this play card campaigning for the release of the 276 Chibok girls held hostage. And the man who was behind all this terror and chaos was this man, Abu Bakr Shekau. Between 2009 to 2021, he was the leader of Boko Haram, a Nigerian Islamic extremist group. According to the United Nations, from 2011 to 2020, the Boko Haram was responsible for the death of over 350,000 people in Nigeria. So, in essence, Abu Bakr Shekau, the leader of Boko Haram, oversaw the death of over 350,000 people in Nigeria before his death in June 2021. But how did this all happen? Because the question that most people always ask is, how did he go from a young promising Islamic scholar and a perfume vendor in Meduguri to having a 50 million naira and a 7 million dollars bounty placed on his head by the Nigerian and US government respectively? Well, let's talk about it. Welcome to today's Africa and if you like informative and educative videos about Africa like this, please do make sure you subscribe to our channel for more videos like this every day. Abu Bakr Shekau was just like a normal boy born in a small village of Shekau in Yobe state and one of those things that has been a mystery about Shekau is his age. No one really know when he was born but it is believed that he was born in one of these years either in 1965, 1969 or 1975. Nothing much is known about his family but when he became famous for the kidnap of the Chibok girls, this woman identified as his mother, Farmata Abu Bakr came out to speak against his son's atrocity. Just like traditions for poor Muslims in northern Nigeria, Shekau was sent off at a tender age to join the Almajiri street keys. There he became obsessed with Islam and all the doctrines. Shekau was an ethnic carnary man and surprisingly he spoke Hausa, Fulani, Arabic and English. He was said to have a photographic memory as well. In 1990, he moved to the Mofani area in Madugri and studied under a traditional cleric before entering the Borno College of Legal and Islamic Studies, but later dropped out without completing his course. Few months down the line, he met this man, Mohammed Yusuf, the founder of Boko Haram, who was also from Yobe State. Mohammed Yusuf was executed by the Nigerian police of Madugri branch following the July 2009 Boko Haram uprising. Nothing much is known about his other children but his elder son, Albanawi, stood tall among others and followed his father's footsteps. It's a bit of a twisted story, so make sure you watch the video to the end to understand this in detail. With Muhammad Yusuf's death, this gave birth to the villain story of Abu Bakr Shekau, who resented the Nigerian government for killing his mentor and leader. And because of that, Shekau took over as the leader of Boko Haram, with Shekau in charge now the story of Nigeria's series of pain began. And just so you understand more, the main aim of Boko Haram is to overthrow the Nigerian government and establish Sharia law and governance in Nigeria. 
especially in northern Nigeria where Islam is the dominant religion. So, Shekau's tactics were marked by extreme brutality and targeting of civilians like kidnapping, bombing and attacking markets, church, government institutions, and even schools. In June 2012, the US Department of State declared Shekau a terrorist and effectively froze his assets in the United States. In June 2013, the department had a standing reward of 7 million US dollars for information leading to Shekau's capture through its Reward for Justice program. In addition, the Nigerian government also offered 50 million naira reward for Shekau, but those never paid off as Shekau was never caught. In response to that, Shekau posted several videos online threatening the Nigerian and American governments, boasted often about his invincibility, mocked various armies and stated that he cannot be stopped and cannot die except by the will of Allah. And some of the terrorist attacks that he took credit for was the Nigeria's 2011 United Nations office bombing that left 21 people dead and 73 heavily injured. The January 20, 2012 series of attacks where more than 185 people lost their lives in a single day in Nigeria's northeastern state of Kano. The 2016 Borno IDP camp bombing, the 2014 Nyanya bomb blast, the Meduguri bomb blast, Yola bomb blast and so many more. And then April 14, 2014 Chibok girls kidnap where 276 school girls were kidnapped from their dormitory in Chibok, a town in Meduguri, Nigeria. Shekau also announced that the kidnapped girls has been converted to Islam in a bid to wage war against Christianity in Nigeria. When Shekau took charge, the Boko Haram became increasingly aggressive and began to seize large areas in northeastern part of Nigeria. The violence escalated dramatically in 2014, with a total of 10,849 deaths directly caused by them. When Boko Haram became stronger, Shekau expanded his territory to Cameroon, Chad, Mali, Niger, and as far as South Africa, therefore becoming a major regional conflict in Sub-Saharan Africa. In a move that in turn saw the end of Shekau, Shekau wanted to improve his international standing among jihadists. He therefore made affiliation with Islamic State of Iraq and Syria ISIS, in March 2015. At first, it was a good move for him because he received weapons and financial support from al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, which he is now subject to. But all hell got loose when he refused to take orders from Baghdadi. After several unheeded orders from ISIS to stop using women and children as suicide bombers, as well as to refrain from the mass killing of civilians, Shekau refused to change his tactics. Because of Shekau's refusal to subject to Baghdadi's central orders, he was expelled as the leader of ISWAP in August 2016. Shekau responded by breaking away with fighters who were loyal to him, but many of the rebels stayed loyal to Baghdadi's ISWAP. As a result, the rebel movement split into Shekau loyal faction, generally known as Boko Haram, and ISIS loyal faction, led by Abu Musab al banawi who we previously talked about, Mohammed Yusuf's son, the founder of Boko Haram, so, Albanawi continued as the leader of ISWAP. In the following years, Albanawi's ISWAP and Shekau's Boko Haram became arch enemies and constantly rebelled against each other. With more military support, ISWAP grew into a more powerful group, whereas Shekau had about 1,000 to 2,000 fighters under his command by 2019, while ISWAP had about 5,000 troops. Okay, now to his death. It would be fair to say that Shekau is a cat with nine lives. Shekau was reportedly killed in 2009, but reappeared as the group leader less than a year later. The Nigerian army in mid-August 2013 stated that he was fatally wounded when soldiers raided Boko Haram's base in Sambisa forest and had died between 25th of July and 3rd of August. The Nigerian army also stated to have killed him during the 2014 Battle of Konduga that lasted from 12th to 14th of September. The Cameroonian military also posted a photo and claimed to have their forces killed Shekau in September 2014. Shekau was also reported to have been fatally wounded during the airstrike in Tyre village on August 19, 2016 by the Nigerian Air Force, which also killed some of the senior leaders of Boko Haram. On 25th of September 2016, a video of Shekau was released on YouTube in which he claimed to have been alive and in good health. But in April 2021, ISWAP overran Nigeria's army base around Minok, capturing armored fighting vehicles including 
men battle tanks, as well as other military equipment. In May 2021, fighting ensured between Iswap and Shekau's troops. Iswap invaded Sambiza Forest, Boko Haram's traditional stronghold, and encircled Shekau on 19th of May 2021. According to Iswap, their initial attempt was to convince Shekau to surrender and acknowledge Albanawi's authority, but Shekau refused. In the middle of the negotiations, Shekau reportedly used a suicide vest to kill himself, as well as a senior Iswap frontline commander who was also talking to him at the time. But this time around, he died for good, and his death was confirmed by Boko Haram loyalists and Albanawi himself. Albanawi, who also died in September of the same year. All the same, Shekau died as the greatest terrorist Nigeria has ever seen. But the terror and the fear he put into the lives of Nigerians can never be forgotten. So there you have it. Thanks for watching today's Africa. Please do make sure you subscribe to our channel for more videos like this every day.